Leo Cahill. If there wasn't a story to write about, to create some interest in the Argos, Leo would create a story. I don't think anything can ever bother this football team again, Bob. This is the greatest comeback I've ever seen. We ended up in the Eastern Final against the Ottawa Rough Riders, and Ottawa had Russ Jackson. He was my best fan, because I always seem to have outstanding football games against the Toronto Argonauts. Had to play a two-game total point series. We were leading after the uh, the first game in Toronto. We had a substantial lead and Leo says only an act of God is going to keep us from going to the Grey Cup. Well, we go to the go to Ottawa. It's a terrible day. The field is mud and it's cold and there's ice and we just get stomped. And of course the headline uh, in the paper next day was uh, God walked across the Rideau in the form of Russ Jackson. Considered himself an amateur psychologist, I think, but seemed to get through to a lot of people. It's been my experience that if you really listen to what people have to say, and if you really make an effort, that it's appreciated, and they get that family feeling again, and that they want to be associated with the team. Leo would come in, and his favorite line is, you know what, boys? He said, every one of the guys in this room, nobody wanted you. He said, you were cut. You're all rejects. You were all cut from somewhere, and I took you in. Pinball Clemens. People always tried to give me nicknames and nothing stuck. He went in there and started bouncing off of guys. He got hit here and he bounced over here and got there. So I'm the new guy and uh, when I get, you know, this is a goal line scrimmage and so, you know, when I, when I get the ball, right, I get smoked but I don't fall out. So Obi says, do it again, right? This is the worst thing you ever want to hear if you're a scout team player because now they know what's coming. I get the ball this time again and immediately, almost as soon as I get the ball this time, I get hit. It just blows my categories, but I don't fall down. I run around the other end this time and I score again. He said, you, little guy, get out of my drill and do it again. So I never had to run goal line scrimmage in practice again. After the practice, that's what I said. So he was like a little pinball out there. He's bouncing around from one guy to the other and uh, it just stuck. There's Clements inside and pinball springs loose. A pinball lunging touchdown. <laughs> they tried silly things like dynamite and that kind of thing and nothing, nothing ever stuck. But that was the first one that stuck. We that speech was supposed to be a lot better. Um, I, I, uh, I was kind of prepared and then I got captured by emotion. There were sort of things that I was gonna say and supposed to say and then I was just wrapped up in my guys and wrapped up in the moment. I've heard pinball a thousand times. And he was a guy that, you know, would keep the guys loose. Have him out there, bring us up, do a little chant, get us dancing and smiling. Um, in the locker room, inspirational speeches, uh, you know, and words of wisdom, always a smile on his face, always positive. The underdogs are always fan favorite. Those kind of athletes, players, uh, the fans relate to them because they're always overcoming big odds to show that they're capable of playing in a game that maybe a lot of people thought they couldn't play. Adriano Belli. Friday night football, let's get it on. I'm gonna bleed all over this kid. I'm not the all-time penalty leader in the league for. <laughs> there's a reason for that. I've been lucky to play this sport because it's a. Uh, you know, we, we get paid to hit people for a living. It's fantastic. Obviously, I'm an Italian kid, and uh, we kiss in my family. Uh, we're very affectionate. Uh, you know, I always took a little bit of heat for it, but I, I, it didn't really turn into something until I kissed Don Matthews. I came off and I just planted a big one on him. And uh, it was a nice smooch, but Don is one of those coaches that sits there and he doesn't, he's got that stone face during the game. He was mad at me at first, and then uh, once the media got a hold of it, uh, it, it turned into something kind of cool. The fact is, is that he kisses men and enjoys it. My favorite guy to kiss is obviously pinball. I've been kissed by him and I kind of enjoyed it too. Because he's so cute, I could fit him in my pocket. <laughs> I don't mind calling him kissing bandit because I see him kiss everybody and everything. So it really doesn't matter if it's a person, it doesn't matter if it's an animal. <laughs> Belly is going to kiss it if he feels like he needs to kiss it. I probably wouldn't be able to get away with grabbing people and giving them a big uh, smooch on the cheek if I wasn't so big and I didn't have hands like bananas. The reason why he gets away with it is because he's huge. He's always bringing pastries in for guys. He's not afraid to wear pink. He's always baking. Definitely doing a lot of cooking at home. Belly's belly and always will be. Gotta love him. But when this 
300 pound guy who, who sings, you get one of the biggest, biggest personalities, I think, in our league. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. As for Adriano, well, he goes back to work. Ah! Oh! With his, with his father in the meat factory, Michael Whalen, TSN. Jermaine Copeland. I'm a huge dancer. You can ask my folks. I've danced all my life. Touchdown, Jermaine Copeland. Copeland two-step. I would tell guys, if you don't want them to dance on you, don't let them score. I loved them all. I, I really love the bicycle. Everybody always wants us to bring the bicycle back. The bicycle, to me, is undisputed to me the best touchdown celebration I've ever seen. This receiver core likes to have a little fun after they get to the end zone, don't they? You know they've got to work on that stuff, right? Like, I just, they don't just make that up. To have the entire receiving core all in there together, some guys not having to play the leading role, which every receiver wants to play as the leading role. You know, it takes a lot of sacrificing, but it took a lot of hard work to make it happen. Somebody's going to kneel down, put your hands on the back of somebody kneeling on the ground with your hands up and be the handlebars. Whoever, the three that doesn't score, somebody get on the bottom, lay on the bottom, be the pedals, and whoever scores gets to get on top and ride the bike. People come to watch stuff like that, in my opinion. I love the bobsled just because we were, uh, we were in Calgary. What is going on? This is the bobsled now? The bobsled. The bobsled. <laughs> oh, now I've seen it all. To the right, to the left, right front. And it'll break out, and then we'd all just fall down, and it worked like a charm. What fan doesn't love to see stuff like that? I was actually jealous of some of his touchdown celebrations. I never regret it. I love it, and uh, if I was younger, I'd still be doing it, to tell you the truth. Jeff Reinbold. Hey, this is a game, dude. G-A-M-E, game. Play the game. Doesn't mean you don't go out to win or you don't take it serious, but when you go out to express yourself and have fun. He must have blown him away in, in the interview, and... I don't know if they knew what they were getting into once they got it. Never get a second chance to make a first impression. He would pull up uh, on, on the field doing practice with his Harley and park it right there. When you get to be a head coach, do you, you, know, do you have to ride, drive an SUV? I, I don't know. Not me. I'm not going to do it. The one thing that really stood out, this is our first game, home game. This is his first game as a head coach, and he's on the sideline before the game with a tank top on, some flip-flop, and some cut-off shorts. I'm like, this is our head coach. This is going to be a long year. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Adam Rita has to say with Jeff Reinbold. Oh, very upset. As you can see, very upset. I've never seen coaches get into it. It's kind of a surprise that Jeff Reinbold didn't retaliate, being that during the season, Jeff Reinbold would have his personal trainer come into the locker room, and he would take personal boxing lessons. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe this is his chance to maybe use his trade that he's been practicing all along. And then the players like to watch. I hear Ferguson go to Stigo, because Stigo was trying to renegotiate his contract. He goes, Milk, I don't think you want to renegotiate your contract right now. So. <laughs> so I was actually doing it just to prevent Milk from making more money. <laughs> he has uh, speakers on the field blasting Bob Marley. Boom, 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 boom. You know, Bob Marley's out there talking about smoking weed and... <laughs> you think Bob Marley's mellow, all right? Then you gotta go back and you gotta listen to Iron Like a Lion in Zion that spoke strong, strong messages about, you know, being a warrior. At the end of the game, when it's all over with and you won, you go up in the stands, you find your wife, you find your family. Banky, you hold your son after you win a football game. Because I'm telling you, man, you got this much of this life. This much of this life when you play this game. After the game, win, lose, or draw, he used to go out with the guys and buy the guys drinks and do all this crazy stuff. And as a head coach, you can't do that. But, hey, the guys loved him. He, he just didn't win in the game. We were horrible at the team, but we had a good time losing. Put it like that. Milt Stiegel. You want to get your ratings up? So you put Milt Stiegel's beautiful face on the TV? Anybody who can play at as high a level as Milt Stiegel played for as long as Milt Stiegel played, I mean, you got to be a different guy. I tell people, if I was playing against my mother, I'm trying to beat her, but when the game is over, would I still love her? There's only a couple guys who can get away with, you know, being, um, being like Milt. That's Milt and, um, and Milt. He's great. Just ask him. People think I love the camera, but it's actually the camera loves me. He would tell you he's going to produce, and he'd go out there and produce, and he'd tell you about it. He always says, is, is, what is it, six, six guarantees in life? He'll make sure that he gets a chance to tell you. Every, every chance he gets, he'll, he'll let you know. Of course, the first three, taxes, death, and trouble, and the last three, Milt Stiegel will always look good. Just ask Mrs. Stiegel. Milt Stiegel will always be on time, especially if it's a free meal. 
or getting his paycheck. And Milt Stegall will always be in shape. There's no question about that. That is that is true. I always tell people the last time I was out of shape was when my mother had me, and it's her fault because she couldn't work. She wasn't working out. You've never been an athlete before in your life. Uh, yes, I have. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. On what level? Football player. What on what level? Oh, oh, not junior. Oh my goodness, junior high. And I'm answering them, and you're trying to tell me I'm lying to you? No. You got forward and bumped your little head, man. I'm telling you. I'm Mr. Punctual, always on time, and I always look good. Friday night football. The bombers will explode tonight. There is no morning milk. Milk Stegall looks the same 24 hours a day. He thinks he's the best looking human being on this earth. Why does the camera gravitate towards the beagle? Guaranteed you be entertained. Stay tuned. I holler. His character off the field is just as good as his, as his character on the field. I'm not conceited. I'm not humble. I'm dishonest. Milt Stegall is a Canadian Football League wide receiver. Period. He's number one. Everybody else we can talk about. I have nothing else to say. I'm not Britney Spears. Stop following me around. Gizmo Williams. I got the name with Reggie White when I first turned pro with the Memphis Showboats, the United States League, and Reggie White was the big man down at the time, and he uh, took the rookies out to see the movie Gremlins, and Reggie said, the smallest guy on the team is going to be named Gizmo. And Gizmo threw the wave. Here he goes. One man to beat. Goodbye. Reggie, like 6'6", 350 pounds all muscle. I'd have been his wife if he'd asked me at that time. <laughs> Williams. And Gizmo is off to the races again. I'll never forget the next day when I came in the locker room, they took Henry Williams out and Gizmo was on my locker and stayed with it. Everything made Gizmo strange. I mean, he, he'd walk into meetings, a very serious meeting the day, you know, the day of the game, right before the game with no clothes on. True story. A true story. Now, he never attended any of my meetings in the buff, no. But, because I would have fined him. And, uh, <laughs> but it is true that that did happen. The flips he would do in the end zone after he'd return a punt for a touchdown. At Northwest Mississippi Junior College, when I first got out of high school and I went to junior college, I was doing it in practice. And I used to catch the ball and just run and flip. And my head coach just loved watching me doing it all the time. And when I got to the end zone and I'm running off the football field, I can see my head coach doing like this here, go back and do the flip. And I'm like, what is he saying? I couldn't, I'm tired. And all of a sudden, he said, he wants you to do the flip. So I ran back out there and I done the flip. Billy flip. Yes. I remember one time coming off the football field and I didn't do the flip. The crowd booed. I had to run right back on the football field and do the flip. The flip? Yeah. He, uh, that's what, you know, he, he'll he tell you today that he brought, he brings 10,000 fans to Edmonton Stadium when he was there. Gizmo, and I love you, Giz, but you were captain of the all-ugly team, and you know it. We always talked about that. As a character, he had that, <laughs> that giggle, that laugh. Oh, God, yeah. Stupid laugh I used to do. I don't know. It comes out. It, I can't do it. It's just something that happened. So <laughs> don't smile. Top 10 characters. He's number one. He's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and number one. He's all of them. You know, he's that good. Hi, I'm Gizmo Williams with Tracy Ham, TSN. Thank you very much. Honey Rogers. Well, I guess I could uh, uh, call myself a little flamboyant. Johnny came in 1973. Uh, I think we would all admit that Johnny was probably one of the most gifted athletes that any of us had ever seen. I remember Johnny Rogers coming in as the ordinary superstar. We actually cut the uh, cutter record. I wanted our youth to understand that you could come from any place. Ghetto children try to be like me. They all want to be famous and free, yeah. You all know that I'm a player, and I don't mind you playing around with me. I would you all been asking for. I've got to say, I know the way. I'm, I'm the ordinary superstar. Remember, remember him with his fur coats and all that kind of stuff. He was very flamboyant. He was very good. Everybody in Montreal wears fur coats. <laughs> it's just like a fashion show every day. It was rather flamboyant, but Montreal is a flamboyant city. He was somebody <laughs> that, as a player, I thought uh, he was, uh, you know, great for the, the CFL at the time. There was guys that had little dances, but this was more than a dance. This was in your face. I mean, it's one thing to to do the shuffle and all these different things you see in the NFL and guys up here spiking the ball. 
But this was like, I've left you so far behind. I'm so far in front of you, I can walk in backwards. I probably rubbed a few people the wrong way, but I don't think I rubbed that many of them the wrong way. They don't pay us to tie or to lose, they pay us to win. That was exciting because I think he could run faster backwards than most of us could run forward. The opposite position uh, doesn't respond to well to you running touchdowns on them, whether you run them firmers or backwards. So. He'd get around the seven, ten yard line, depending where he fell, and he'd back and he'd, he'd run in backwards, right, and kind of stick it in the face. If I was an opposing player, of course, I would have taken a shot at him. Well, they wanted to kill Johnny, but the fact of the matter is, he was tough, he was fast, he was quick, uh, he was able to do so many things that when he was in his prime, it was just a case of no one being able to catch him at that moment and put him in his place. I'm no ordinary Dick Thornton. Accepted by Tricky Dick Thornton on the Toronto 45. He called himself Tricky. I'm sure he came up with that nickname himself. Nobody gave it to him. I was always promoting and always had new ideas and concepts. When he came up to the CFL with Winnipeg Blue Bombers, he was a quarterback in college. Kenny Plain was a great quarterback. And I went to Kenny and I said, look it, I'm going to start ragging you about wanting to play quarterback. I said, don't pay attention to it because... <laughs> It's just all smoke and mirrors. Tricky. Tricky, he'd hire kids in Winnipeg. He'd hire kids to run around the stadium with banners, you know, saying Thornton for quarterback. No, no, it, this it just happened. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it, but I loved it. I did a radio interview. The announcer said, what do you think of Winnipeg? And I said, the best thing about Winnipeg is the road leading out. <laughs> True story. I was traded the next day. My life off the field, I think, was pretty wild as well. I was single most of my professional CFL career, and uh, those were crazy times. Uh, you had the birth control pill got invented, you know, so wow, we had a sexual revolution, and every guy we were, went crazy, right? That's when we turned hippie. In 1968, I got the travel bug, and I ended up hitchhiking in Europe for the whole off season. I got thrown in jail in Spain for swimming naked. I had to make a long distance call to Leo and say I'd be late for training camp. I played hard all the way. I'm still playing hard. <laughs> That's why I live in the Philippines. I have 37 bars and nightclubs outside my front door. I have a beautiful five-year-old daughter and I have an 11-year-old son and they keep me young at heart. Angelo Mosca. I know that a lot of guys said that I did things, but I just played the game very tough. DC Lions star Willie Fleming runs the end. Now watch for Angelo Mosca. Fleming is knocked out and the Lions lose. Was it dirty? The officials say no. Some newspapers say yes. The headlines was dirtiest player injured star. And this is uh, no in no way true because I'm never up to meme anybody. When I do, I think it's time that I get out of this game. As a result of that incident, he had that bad guy tag pinned to his back that he would carry for well, the rest of his career. When I go out to BC, they still hate me. He was a tough son of a gun, but he, he was a big kid at that time. I played the game very physical. In those days, the head slap was in, the clothesline was in. Oh, he got a shoulder right into the chin from Angelo Mosca. He was a massive man. His forearms, he would be swinging with clubs and he would be ducking. If you didn't like me, it's too bad. Just ask my teammates what they think of me. The Hamilton franchise, uh, I think, was identified with a guy like Angie because he was a tough, hard-nosed guy. I was tailor-made for this town. He was a perfect personality to go into the wrestling business. There was a fuller in Montreal named Eddie Quinn. And he said, you know, you're making a name for yourself. Why don't you try professional wrestling? Here is King Kong Mosca. Two different careers. Wrestling, you're an individual on your own. Look at the viciousness in this match. His athleticism allowed for him to make that transition. And if you're able to talk... Let me tell you something, hey, what's the matter? That was the key part of professional wrestling. That blood is thicker than water. When you're the bad guy, people really believe what you're doing. I used to work out every morning, take care of myself physically. I used to tell my son, we're like hookers, and the better you look, the more money you're going to make. Because King Kong Muska is going to show you how I walk and talk and do exactly what I want to. Thanks for watching, folks. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you again.